Hey everyone, welcome to episode 20 of the Ryan Holt Show podcast. Today I'm in the lovely uh, Elle's Closet Boutique. Um, before I get into my next guest, uh, I'm super excited to have her on. Uh, literally from uh, $1,200 to two retail stores, I think it's extremely, extremely cool. Um, but I just want to give out some shout outs uh, to some listeners that have been listening to the Ryan Holt Show podcast. We've had tons of good reviews, um, tons of good listenership, and I really, really want to thank everybody for that. Um, but anyways, I'm standing right here, Michelle Bishop, a.k.a. Kelly. I got that name wrong. Um, <laughs> she's a 33-year-old registered massage therapist by trade, um, mother of two, wife, entrepreneur, um, just a, a boss lady that does it and makes it look really, really easy. Um, so, Michelle, welcome to the show. Thank you for having me. So, uh, tell us about how you even started this journey. Uh, yeah, so it's kind of crazy. Literally, um, I went to an Easter party and a friend of mine was wearing these leggings and they were ugly yeah. and I couldn't stop staring at them. And I was like, why is she wearing those? And the more I kept staring at them, I started falling in love with them. And I was like, those are fantastic. And then at the end, it turned out she was selling these leggings. So I went to her house the next day and I bought a pair and I was hooked. I'm like, I love these things. They're amazing. They're like crazy patterns. Um, so I talked to her and she got me set up selling them as well. Okay. And then I started thinking, why am I paying this company to sell me these leggings and then I, and then I'm only making a small profit. Why wouldn't I just order them myself from the wholesalers and make the whole profit? Um, at what moment though, what, what actually made you think that? Like what, like, I mean, just, you know, no business acumen, no business background. Um, like how did you even get into that thought space to do that? I, I, I don't know. It was just like literally Ryan, I was killing it. Like I was, selling thousands of dollars worth of leggings in oh, every, couple, every couple nights. I was going to people's houses and doing this. People come to my house every day to buy them. And I'm like, you know, why am I not making more off of this? I truly don't need this person's help. I can do this myself. Um, so I looked into it and it took a lot to figure out where to get them from. Cause it was kind of scary. Like I'm like, I don't know where I'm ordering from. I don't know what I'm doing. I had yeah, to yeah. figure out how to even get like a GST number and all that. <laughs> I didn't even know how to do that. So, um, yeah, I just decided I figured it out and, uh, cut out the middle guy, I guess you could say. And then people started, well, can you get us tunics? Can you get us scarves? Can you get me this? And then all of a sudden I had the store operating out of my base. So I started thinking, well, let's get a real store going. Yeah, Obviously, yeah, there's yeah. a need for it in this town. Um, but there wasn't really anything, any retail space available. And this available. is Athabasca, which is like 3,000 people, yeah. small town. Yeah. You said your store is uh, bigger than the one we're standing in here in Kingsway Mall. Yes. I mean, I, I just think that, yeah, I know it's a small town you know, mentality and support local, but it's only 3,000 people. That's still a little risky. So, I mean, what yeah. did you think about that? Well, um, I did a lot. I shipped a lot. Um, I was very active on Facebook with it, um, taking pictures. That's sort yeah. of the whole, like, selfie Michelle thing kind of started. Uh, <laughs> yeah, I <guess. laughs> shipping them. So yeah. I actually had quite a uh, following before I even started the store. Yeah. Um, and then I, when I got the space, it was actually an office space. So it was totally not retail appropriate, sure. but I just kind of told people like, this is where we're going to ship out of. This is going to kind of be our warehouse. We'll be here these hours. Come if you want. Um, and then it just was like, clearly this is going to be a store. We need more space. And then something became available on main street within a few months. Yeah. So I'm like, I need this space. I have to go. So I jumped in there, and then a few months later, so a bit the store I'm currently in became available. And I thought I was not ready to move. I was not yeah, ready to yeah. like it was like triple the size of the space I was in. But um, I thought, what when, about, like, what about like when I think of things like that though? It's like, what about cash flow? What about money? Like, where'd you get the finances, the resources? Like, I talk to so many people every single day, and they're like, you know, I really have this venture. I want to start it. You know, I have commitments at home. I have mm -hmm. to support a household. I have to. There's just so many reasons why not to. Yep. Uh, and yes, I, I mean, I'm an entrepreneur through and through, so I know the reasons that you should, but for people out there that are hesitant, like, where do you even start though? Like, I mean, you just said, Hey, you know, the retail space came open and then you reacted. Um, well, I'm, I am fortunate that my husband does make pretty good money. Yep. So we weren't relying on me yep. for an income. I couldn't afford to cost us money. He's not rich by any means, yeah, yeah. but <laughs> yeah. he, you know, he was yeah. happy as long as I wasn't costing us money. Sure. So truly I built from that $1,200 box of leggings. It all just, as soon as I made some more money, I invested. I made more money, I invested. I kept putting every penny I made back into the business. I'm still doing that. Um, and I am fortunate that my husband can take care of us financially and that we're, my income isn't essentially needed. Like, hopefully this is our little nest egg. Absolutely. But I mean, okay, 
we're okay right now. And then, I mean, that, that kind of segues into the other thing. It's, I, I always say in entrepreneurship, I mean, a lot of people who will talk you out of doing business uh, are usually the ones that are closest to you, the moms, the sisters, the brothers, the aunties, the uncles. Mm -hmm. They'll always tell you the reasons why not and to play, quote unquote, safe. Um, how, how much of an intricate role has your husband played in all this? He, so, yeah, he's been amazing. I wouldn't have done any of this if I didn't have a husband like the husband I have. Yep. He's been my number one supporter the whole time. He's believed in me when I, um, questioning every choice I make and I always wonder like why why is this working I don't even know what I'm doing why <laughs> is it working and he's like don't question it just keep doing you you're doing it good yeah and honestly if he doubted me this would have ended a what's, long time what's ago. What's his name? What's his first name? Colby. Shout out to Colby, man. <laughs> the unsung hero. I know he's probably the Instagram husband that's taking all the pictures. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he's, he's doing all the work and getting no credit. So, you know, we might have to rename this podcast after your husband. So, yeah. mad shout outs. Listen to in the car, man, and know that you're famous now. But uh, uh, enthusiasm, your mom, uh, are you a sister? Do you have siblings? I do. I have two sisters. Your sister, your uh, wife, you're an entrepreneur, you're a mentor, you're you're a leader, you're a follower, you're almost everything. Um, and the world, you know, we were always taught in school to kind of pick a lane and stay in the damn lane, which I totally disagree with. Mm -hmm. um, how have you managed to take your character and diversify into so many different things and then still keep like really proper and actually still keep taking care of your feet? <laughs> <laughs> um, I think I get bored really quickly. Um, yeah. I like, I thrive on change. I thrive on chaos. Um, so it's actually better for me to be like this. When times slow down, I'm I'm a worrier. Mm -hmm. I always overanalyze everything. I struggle. I worry so much. I'm thankful for my husband because he's the opposite. He's very much like, yeah, it'll all work out. Um, so we balance each other in that sense. But I think if I didn't have so many lanes to be in, I would be lost. Interesting. What, what, when's your birthday? August 25th. What, what sign does that make you? Uh, Virgo. Virgo. What's mm -hmm. a Virgo like? I, you know, I don't even really know. She's like, like me. Yeah, here you go. <laughs> uh, it's interesting. You Okay, so you're diversifying your character because you get bored. Mm -hmm. It's a really great reason to be successful in life because you're just fucking bored, right? Exactly. Um, and I like that. But, I mean, dig deeper into that because it's, it's how have you even managed to be self-aware, introspective enough to figure out who you are, what your strengths are. Um, you know, you're obviously kind of a perfectionist, but as you know, in business, nothing is ever perfect. Yep. So that's automatically a character test. So, I mean, what's things like, what, what are some things that you do to actually keep you in check? Um, I don't, I, that's a tough one. I it's don't a really, good one. It's a good one. I don't even really know what to say to that. I, um... Okay, let me give you an example. Yeah. So I, I'm, I'm messaging you on Instagram. It's like all through the day yesterday about this podcast today. Um, it's like eight, nine o'clock at night. Then I'm like, Hey, are we still on for two 30? That was like, I don't know, six, seven in the morning. And I'm like, do you sleep? So Wait. like, you don't, it's, it seems like your, your personal and your professional are almost blended. Oh, Cause yeah. it, I mean, I'm talking to him like, is she at home or is she not at home? Is she yeah. at the store? What is she doing? Like, like how, do, how have you centered that? Like, how do you do that? Um, so I wanted like the phone number to the shop is my cell number yeah. um, because <laughs> Yo, I that is a huge point right there. Uh, a lot of, well, and, and you know what? I'm going to interject a lot here because I think that, you know, there's pain points that people always ask me. And number one is they'll say, Hey Ryan, how do you, how do you get like success? You know, how do you build a business? How do you do, you know, what you do? And then I start asking them like little character questions. So I'm like, so what, what are you doing on Sunday? Oh, I don't work on Saturday. Oh, I don't work on Sunday. Yeah, right. So can you tell the world, if you really want to be successful at your craft, like, like what does it take in terms of time? 24 hours a day, seven days a week. Absolutely. Absolutely. No joke. Um, it's tough. And especially being a mom to young girls, it's tough. Um, but I, as much as it's hard, I'm passionate about it. I love it. It drives me it feeds me mm. um happy customers getting like you can believe the amount of emails and texts and dms i get from people just saying i just wanted to say like thanks for mm. the great customer service and i'm like mm. what you went out of your way to do that for me like and then and that just sets my soul on fire like it makes me incredibly happy to know that somebody cared enough to actually send me a message to tell me good job like uh, in business, we talk a lot about, um, I had Navin on in episode 18 and she was an engineer that yep. was a stay at home mom that, you know, kind of turned into a stay at home mom that does everything but staying at home. Yeah. She has her own business now, but we often talk about 
the equality between women and men in business. How do you feel about that being a woman who's doing business? And this is a huge topic because even if you look online and stuff, you kind of get that that girl mentality where they're like, yo, girl boss, hey ladies, yeah. how's it going? You know, really support and uplift one another. Um, I'm all about empowering. I was raised by a woman. I love women. I think women are fantastic. I mean, you, a woman brought me into this world. Yep. Um, you know, my wife brought my first son, our first child into the world. Yep. It, it plays a huge role. Um, I mean, if, you know, if you come into my relationship, I just say, man, my wife is ever, she's way better than me. I mean, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just here. And, it, it, but my question is, is what would you say to women out there that take that mentality and say, it, we're not being treated equal, but I'm going to push it out because I think it's a slippery slope between saying, okay, I'm going to, I'm, I'm going to play that card yep. and then I'm going to play it so that I don't succeed. You know, I hope I don't make anybody angry over this. Please but, do. Uh, I don't believe there's any difference in men and women. I don't. Um, I am all about the boss babes and, you know, killing it, ladies killing it in the workforce. Um, just because I think it's awesome. Because it, it, the difference is a man goes to work all day long and brings home the bacon and nobody ever says to him, like, oh, wow, amazing, you're raising children and working. Holy, good for you. Mm. But people do it to me all the time. Yeah. How do you do it? How do you be a mom and own a business? You don't ask my husband that, so why are you asking me? Mm. And it kind of annoys me because... Mm. You know, he like he does work away, but when he is home, he is Mr. Mom. He takes Absolutely. care of the kids, and uh, but, so I, I just, I don't see a difference. If you do see a difference, you're not applying yourself enough. Interesting. Being a father myself, I can totally attest to this. Even from the pregnancy, going all the way until uh, Dejan was delivered, everything was really geared towards the mom. Mm -hmm. yep. Almost so much that the, the doctors didn't even know how to react to the dad. Right. And I was very much, as an entrepreneur, I literally made my schedule so that I never missed a moment in my son's life. Mm -hmm. And it's held true to that t t t today, literally. Um, I, when I hear women do the girl boss thing, I love it, but then I almost think... Are you almost doing yourself a disservice? And like you said, I mean, your husband's not getting pat on the back because he's taking care of his kids or, or providing for the family. It's almost like it should be expected. Yeah. Whereas when you do it, it's like some sort of like, wow, this is amazing, which I think can almost be borderline on like condescending. Well, and you see, too, my husband, because he, he is home quite often, like he works two weeks on, two weeks off. So two weeks he's home, he does everything. He takes the girls to school, he takes them to play group, and people, he gets quite offended, actually, because people say to him, like, oh, you're such a good dad, look what you're doing. And he's like, <laughs> you would never tell Michelle she's a good mom because she took Abby to school. Yeah. So yeah. why am I so amazing because I was able to get my daughter dressed this morning? Like, And I, I, I appreciate that I married somebody that has that outlook because it's true why should he get a pat on the back because he fed them lunch absolutely like, it's now a two-way street what do you say to how does you and your husband balance it in your relationship in terms of you're going out there you're doing the marketing you're front and center on your business he's definitely i mean like you said he, he provides a great base which mm -hmm. you know provides a stability but at the same token, you're the one that's going out there and kind of being like the face of everything. Yeah. Meanwhile, he's doing a lot of work. Mm -hmm. And I call it like, you know, grunt work in, the, in terms of what is needed, mm -hmm. but it's not necessarily getting the glamorization that it deserves. Yep. How do you guys juggle that? Um, I, I don't know. He is just, I don't know. He, he, it just, it works for us. We've done it. We've just been working it well. He is kind of happy to be behind the scenes and keeping everything running <laughs> smoothly. He yeah. kind of makes, pokes fun at me at my Insta stories and keeps me like, he, he won't let my head get too big for sure. <laughs> Interesting. Okay. So okay. he keeps me grounded in that sense. But, um, so let's get into some, okay. So, the, so we talked about the husband, we talked about a little bit of the family. Let's get into more. So you were a marathon runner. Mm -hmm. Um, you really enjoy doing that. Obviously your new ventures kind of cut into some of that time, which you yeah. mentioned, but what things do you do in terms of like running that keeps you centered, keeps you focused and takes you out of that grind of your business? Because we know that you could be here 24-7, 365, yeah. literally, but we know that that would not keep you fresh. So what do you do think, what do you do to keep you, keep yourself fresh? Um, honestly, this last year, not much and it's not been good and I can appreciate that. Yeah. Um, I used to run. Running yep. was my yep. thing. It, it gave me my clarity. But ever since having my second daughter and then the store expanding and branching out into our website, there just truly wasn't time. Um, and so I, 
it's hard too because you say like what do you do for you to keep you centered but I love what I'm doing. I don't want to do something else. When I ha- when the girls go to bed at night, I get my glass of wine and I sit there on my Instagram or I'm on my computer and I'm working and it's fun. I don't want to do anything else. Once in a while, Grey's Anatomy can tear me away, <laughs> but that's about it. <laughs> <laughs> what? Okay, it's interesting. So just to give context, I think I've been on your Instagram. God, I mean, it's been a while, but way before, way before I even started the podcast. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think I actually got on to yours from Jen's and then I started following, and I liked, the first thing I noticed about the Instagram was, a lot of it was you, yep. literally you. Yep. So if you go to her Instagram, Elle's, what's, what's your handle? It's Elle's Closet Boutique. Elle's Closet Boutique. You'll notice that you see a lot of Michelle, and I thought Michelle was Elle, and I'm yeah. sure you probably get that a lot. Oh, yeah. So yeah. I mean, it's got to be Elle. Yeah. So, so where did Elle come from? So Elle came from Michelle, um, ah. and Gabrielle is my daughter. So I just, the two of us combined, I'm like, Elle, it works. Um, and then I had a second daughter. And I couldn't find an L name I wanted. <laughs> so she's Gemma Anel, which is Annette is my mother's name. And then L for me. So okay. Anel. Yeah. So if we have another one, I don't even know. <laughs> okay. I like that. Now, Instagram is obviously, it seems like that's where you put a lot of focus. Yep. Um, your Instagram is very engaging. Uh, one thing I look at as a marketer when I look at anybody's account or even when we're doing marketing for clients is, when people are actually posting pictures and then people are leaving comments, is the company or brand actually responding back to them, just saying, hey, thanks so much for your comment, things like that. You respond back to almost everybody who comments on your Instagram. Yeah. How much has Instagram played a role in the branding and then also customer acquisition for your company? Huge. Um, huge. I have so many people coming in and they're like, oh, I follow you on Instagram. And they're like, hey, Michelle, you don't know me, but I follow you on Instagram. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I have that sweater. And they're like, I know we saw on Instagram, like there's nothing private about me absolutely, anymore. <laughs> absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <You know> everything. <laughs> absolutely. Um, so, so Instagram though, for you like what is, what about it do you love and I know even I asked you hey are you on Twitter and you're like oh, I'm technically on Twitter but I don't really use it yeah uh, Facebook I notice you have a good following yeah um, and I'm sure sure you're aware of like hey when you post a photo on Facebook not everybody sees it yeah we call that the Facebook edge rank algorithm are you aware of what that is not no for everybody listening here's a good marketing freebie when you post on your Facebook page Facebook has on a business page Facebook has something called the edge rank algorithm which is basically for free, let's say you had 5,000 people that post, only about 13% of those people are going to see them, see the post at any given time. Right. So you'd have to pay for the other 87%. Right. Okay. So that's why Facebook says, hey, if you want everybody to see it, boost it, target it, et cetera, et cetera. Right. So you'll notice that if you have X, Y, I think you have like 4,000 something yeah. on your Facebook. Yep. If you post, you're like, interesting. I don't get a lot of love on it for the number that I have in terms no. of followers. So I actually have um, Elle's Closet VIP page. Okay. I started it Ooh. because I noticed like I had so many people commenting all the time and, and then I just died and nobody ever, and then people would be like, I didn't even see your post. I didn't even see your post. So I created this page and it changed my life within like a week I had 6,000 followers and it stayed there because I thought you know yeah, people yeah. people add people they're yeah, gonna yeah. like they kind of want to be in this stupid group and they're gonna leave but no it stayed steady there for oh gosh I don't remember is that an actual page or is that like a group it's a group so you have to be invited okay. to it okay. like it's hidden but I will often share things from the VIP page and then people will be like oh there's a VIP page and then they request to get added to it so which do you put more focus on the VIP page or the your VIP actual page. L page um, L's only really gets because whatever I show, share to Instagram I can share on Facebook at the same time right just click the button and it goes to Facebook okay. but then okay. I will copy paste it go into my VIP page plus if you're on my VIP page I do lots of giveaways I give out free discount codes okay. things for being a VIP person interesting so. so what prompted you to do the VIP page it's very smart it's almost like a workaround yeah um, Michelle's be- doing some uh, retail marketing hacks. I like it. I like it. <laughs> well, it just frustrated me when I had customers messaging me and being like, I didn't even see that post. Like, I didn't know you had this. And I, I don't mean like one or two. I mean like multiple people. Yeah. People that have been following me for since the beginning. Yeah. And they're not seeing my post. And I'm like, what the heck? And then I would put money into it. And it was still like, meh, you know, 30 likes. Yeah, yeah. Whereas I can put something on my VIP page and get 100 likes and 30 comments. And it costs me nothing. Yeah. And I know that the people who want to see it are seeing it. So 
it's yeah, it's been great. Okay, so if you are again, everybody listening to the show right now, please write that down. It's a huge takeaway. Um, if you're not having traction with your main Facebook page, perhaps you want to do a group. You are you made the group private. Yeah. Is there any specific like um, little tidbits you could give out there, like in terms of how you created the group? Is there certain settings that you use? Is there certain like thought process that went into it? Because I think that's really remarkable. That you got like six thousand people in this group. And everybody stayed. Yeah. So, like, what do you do? Like, um, I well, to to get people to the group, yeah. I did. I think it was like a hundred dollar gift card. Um, you, the the amount of people that you added, you got that many entries in to get, win this hundred dollar gift card. Maybe it was two hundred. I don't know. Um, but oh my gosh, like my phone was literally like <laughs> just blowing up, and I'm like, holy smokes! And people stayed engaged in it. And like, I do live videos. I do product reviews. Like there was one point I brought a product in and I raved about it and I was like, yeah.